Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and this is a special lesson that you are requesting and this is Cost Volume Profit Analysis. I am your lecturer, Kevin Troy M. Chua. Okay, so let's have our objectives for this lesson. So at the end of this session, you should be able to, number one, determine the break-even point using the contribution margin approach, equation approach, target net income approach, and through graphing CVP relationships. Apply CVP analysis to safety margin and analysis of CVP relationships in terms of changes in fixed cost, variable cost, selling price, and volume. Compute for the break-even point in CVP relationships in a multiple product setup and discuss key assumptions of the CVP analysis. Okay, so let's start. Cost volume profit analysis is a powerful tool that helps managers understand the relationships among cost of the products that they sell, volume, which means the production itself, the production number of units and how many units are being sold, and also the profit associated with the manufacturing process. CVP analysis focuses on how profits are affected by the following five factors. So we have five factors to consider, which is the selling price of the product, and then the number of units that is being produced and sold, which we refer to as the volume of sales. And then we also have the variable cost per unit, the total fixed cost and the product mix okay so what you can see here is what you call your cvp analysis in graphical form or in graph form so later we will be discussing how to interpret the graph form of the cvp analysis Okay, so one of the main points in the discussion of CVP analysis is the determination of the entity's break-even point. The break-even point is the point wherein the entity does not enjoy a profit but does not incur a loss. Hindi sila kumita but at the same time hindi rin naman lugi. Okay, so that happens when the total contribution margin is equal to the fixed cost in the production process. This is a determinant on how much sales or how much units to be sold to be able to at least cover all operational costs. Kumbaga, the break-even point gives you the guidance that this is the number of units that you should be able to sell or this is the amount of sales that you should achieve in order for you not to get a loss but at least you can cover all of the operational costs of the company. Okay. Again, the break-even point is the point at which it is the number of units or the level of sales na hindi ka luge, but at the same time hindi ka rin naman kumita pa, no? Ah, uh, kung magasaktuhan lang, nasaktuhan mo yung mismong ah uh, makover yung operational costs mo. Okay. So we have some assumptions in CVP analysis. Okay, so first assumption is that costs are classified as variable or fixed, okay? As opposed to your traditional income statement, which is cost of goods sold and operating expenses, costs are being classified as either if is it variable or fixed, okay? And then variable costs change at a linear rate. So as you all know, total variable cost is based on the number of units that you have produced and sold, right? So... Variable cost in CVP analysis is really assumed that is changing at a linear rate. Mas tumataas yung ating production, mas mataas yung variable cost na na incur ng company. And then we also have fixed cost remains unchanged within the relevant range. So basically, as long as we are within the relevant range, yung fixed cost natin, syempre fixed cost pa din. And then, selling prices do not change as sales volume changes. So ang assumption natin in CVP analysis is nakastick lang tayo dun sa selling price na ating pinag-aaralan. Kasi actually, in uh, after doing the CVP analysis, that will give you now the the idea na baka pwede nating ibaba or itataas yung presyo natin depende sa break even point natin no but as you do the CVP analysis the selling price itself will not change okay and then we also have for multiple product companies nagkakaroon po tayo ng sales mix percentages how much of this and how much of that parang ganun no and that sales mix usually remains constant and then inventory levels remain constant and is not focused too much in CVP analysis okay so wala tayong pakialam sa nagiging purchases or na produce no, because in CVP analysis, it's more of the units that we sell. Okay? But the inventory levels that we maintain, hindi natin yun ganong napapansin in CVP analysis or hindi natin siya kailangan masyadong information in CVP analysis. And then, the greatest factor that affects 
costs in CVP analysis is the volume of production that we do. Okay, so let's discuss contribution margin, what contribution margin is. Remember that the income statement is sales minus cost of goods sold, that is your gross profit, less operating expenses, and that is your net income. However, in creating the contribution margin income statement, we do it like this. Remember that cost of goods sold has variable cost of goods sold, and we also have fixed cost of goods sold, okay? And then we also have variable operating expenses and fixed operating expenses. So what happens in contribution margin income statement is that it's sales and then we deduct all of your variable cost and the difference between sales and variable cost is called your contribution margin, okay? And then you will also deduct a fixed cost from your contribution margin to get your net income, okay? So this equation equation on the right becomes your contribution margin income statement. And coming from that formula or coming from those uh, calculations, we can now compute for your contribution margin approach in getting the break-even point, okay? So for your first formula, the break-even point in units is your fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit, while the break-even point in sales is your fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. Paano po natin nakuha yung ganyang formula? If you would notice, sabi po natin, at break-even point, your net income is zero. So, if you have fixed cost here, at zero ito, ibig sabihin at break-even point, your fixed cost is equal to your contribution margin. So, if your fixed cost is just equal to contribution margin, then you can simply divide directly fixed cost to the contribution margin per unit to get the break-even point in units. Kasi if we divide the contribution margin to the contribution margin per unit, ang lalabas din naman is the number of units that we sold. Okay? So why not directly divide fixed cost to your contribution margin per unit to get your target sales to break even? Okay? And in any case that you need to get your break even point in the amount of sales, then you should divide your fixed cost to your CM ratio or to your contribution margin ratio. Now, to give you an understanding of the CMR, contribution margin ratio is the percentage which represents contribution margin divided by sales. Okay, so try po natin sa problem na ito. Okay, Teddy Company is a manufacturer of teddy bears which currently sells at 250 per unit. Variable cost per unit includes 80 pesos in materials, 50 pesos in labor, and 20 pesos in variable overhead, and 10 pesos in selling and administrative expenses, which are variable, okay? And then fixed cost is 90,000. Let's answer questions number one to four. Okay, so for the first question, how much is the... Uh, CM per unit or your contribution margin per unit. Okay, so this is your equation. You get the selling price per unit, which is 250, and then you deduct your variable cost per unit, which is your materials, labor, overhead, and selling and administrative costs. That is your total variable cost per unit, which is 160. 250 minus 160, selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit, that is your contribution margin per unit. 90. Okay, and then in getting your CMR, you just divide your CM to your selling price. So 90 divided by 250, it is being represented by 36%. So the answer for number one, contribution margin per unit is 90 and your contribution margin ratio is 36. Let's answer question number two. For question number two, how many units should the entity sell every month to break even? So break even point na po yung kinocompute natin. Ilang units daw po ang kailangang mabenta para makover po natin yung ating mga costs. Okay? So yan po ay fixed cost of 90,000. Ito po yun. And then divide nyo po siya sa contribution margin per unit na 90. Your break-even point in units is 1,000 units. Kung ayaw nyo po ng ganyang paraan, edi isulat nyo po yung contribution margin income statement. You start with net income as zero, di ba? Kasi sabi nga po natin, at break-even point, your net income is zero, okay? And then add back your fixed cost and you will get your contribution margin. And then if per unit 90 siya, so your contribution margin at break-even point is 90, and then the contribution margin per unit is 90, then your break-even point in units is 1,000 units, okay? 
Now, for question number three, how much sales should the entity achieve every month in order to break even? So, ang hinihingi naman po sa atin is break even point in the amount of sales. So, you just simply divide your fixed cost to your CM ratio. That is already your break even point in peso sales. So, 90,000 divided by 36% is 250,000. Pero, pwede nyo rin pong gawing ganito. If you already have your break-even point in units, you simply multiply it by the selling price per unit. You already get your uh, break-even point in peso sales, which is as we can see, pareho lang po siya, 250,000. Okay? Or you can also simply do this um, contribution margin income statement. So you start again with zero at break-even point. So fixed cost will be equal to contribution margin. And then kung ano yung katapat niya, kasi ito po yung ating sales percentage, variable cost percentage, and CM ratio. Okay, so 90,000 divided by 36, lalabas po yung 250,000. In any case that you can, uh, or you're required to use algebra, you can compute for your break-even point using the equation approach, okay? So, that is your net income minus sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost, okay? At break-even point, net income is zero, so this will be your equation. Net income is zero at break-even point is equals to 250 pesos per unit na selling price, and then let X represent the number of units that you need to sell, minus 160 pesos variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units that you need to sell and then minus your fixed cost of 90,000. Combine like terms and we have 90x minus 90,000 is equals to zero. Transpo transpose 90x to the other side, we have negative 90x is equals to negative 90,000. Divide both sides by negative 90 and the x represents your break-even point of 1,000 units. And we get the same amount of break-even point expressed in units. Now, in graphing CVP relationships, always remember that the x-axis represents the number of units produced and sold. And then, yung atin naman pong y-axis is the amount of sales. Hindi lang po sales, pati total cost. Diyan din po natin nire-relate. Okay. And then, your total revenue starts from zero kasi uh, wala ka na, kung wala ka namang mabibenta, wala ka talagang kikitain, di ba? So, it starts with zero. And habang tumataas yung number of units na nabibenta mo, tataas siya at a linear rate. Okay? And then, however, for your total cost line, titignan yung mabuti bakit siya nag-start agad hindi sa zero. Remember na meron tayong concept ng fixed cost. Because at whatever level of production, mag-produce ka man o hindi, gagastos ka ng fixed cost eh, di ba? mag incur ka ng fixed cost. So, it is, it starts actually with the fixed cost. And then, syempre, as you produce units, tataas siya because meron kang variable cost na na incur din naman. Okay? So, in graphing CVP relationships, the point where they meet is the break-even point. The area below the break-even point is the loss area, and the area above the break-even point is the profit area. Why? As you can see, the total revenue is greater than total cost. So, that is profit. But at loss, as you can see, the total revenue is lesser than the total cost. Okay? Ganyan nyo po siya i-interpret. -i Okay, let's try. So, prepare the break-even graph for Jim and Company based on the following information. For those who are watching this video na nasa integration subject na po, yung mga graduating for management advisory services, basically, you will not be asked to do the graph anymore because most of your examinations will be multiple choice. So, ang um, ituturo ko na lang dito is how to interpret your um, CVP graph. No? For those naman po na nasa undergrad, o ituturo ko naman yung step by step. Okay? So, ang gagawin nyo po ay ganitong breakdown. Okay? So, uh, ang gagawin po natin, ang unit sold is 50,000 units. So, magkikreate ka ngayon ng breakdown na what if 0 yung nabenta, what if 10,000, what if 20, 30, and 40. Maglalagay ka ng mga what ifs mo. Yung sales revenue is, syempre, mumultiply mo yung number of units sold sa unit selling price. Okay? So, kung wala ka na benta, wala kang sales revenue. For 10,000 units, is 10,000 times 10, 100,000, and so forth. So, kung 50,000 units times 10, 500,000. And then, syempre, variable cost mo, pag wala kang pinroduce, wala kang variable cost. Pero, tumataas ang variable cost habang nagpo-produce ka, which is 6 pesos per unit. So, kung 20,000 units ang iyong na-produce at na-benta, 20,000 units times 6 is 120,000. 
fixed cost will stay the same, 150,000. Siyempre, fixed cost yan within the relevant range. pag adin nyo po yung variable cost and fixed cost to get your total cost. Ang igagraph po natin is the sales revenue and the total cost. And this is how you do your graph. Okay, so, dun tayo sa sales revenue. Siyempre, you start with zero. Tapos, ang gagawin mo, kunyari, dito sa 10,000. 10,000 units sold. So, ito po yun, 10,000. Ang sales revenue mo is 100,000. So, yung point niya parang nandito. Okay? And then, for 20,000 units sold, your sales revenue is 200,000. Okay? X, Y, X, Y lang. How you do it in the Cartesian plane. Okay? Hanggang magbuo mo yung hanggang 500,000, which is dito po yun. Okay? So, your graph would look like this. Okay? And then, for your total cost naman po, it already starts at 150,000 dahil may fixed cost ka kahit hindi ka mag-produce, di ba? So, dito yun, magsa-start, 150,000. And then, add mo lang yung variable cost, kaya siya tataas, kaya gante po ang mangyayari sa kanya. Okay. So, the point where they meet is the break-even point. Now, if you will be solving for the break-even point, it would look like this. The break-even point in peso sales is 375,000 and the break-even point in units is 37,000. 500 units. Now, for those who are in their integration subjects, this will be your uh, interpretation on that. Okay? So, anything or any sales above 375,000 is nasa profit area ka na nun. And any sales lower than 375,000 is nasa loss area ka na nun. Or, any number of units na nabenta mo above 37,500 units is nasa profit area ka na rin nun. And any number of units sold, which is less than 37,500, nasa loss area ka din po nun. Okay. Paano naman po kapag ka meron tayong target net income? So, ang gagawin lang po natin is ia-add po natin si target net income kay fixed cost bago natin i-divide sa contribution margin per unit or CM ratio. Now, madali kapag ka yung target net income mo ay naka before tax kasi you will just simply add it there. Ganito po kasi yan eh. Net income add back fixed cost, that is your contribution margin, di ba? Then divided by the contribution margin per unit, number of units sold. Di ba? Ganun lang. Pareho lang siya dito. Ngayon, paano naman po kapag kayo net income mo is after tax? Ang gagawin mo po ay before tax mo muna siya, itatransform mo siya pabalik sa before tax bago mo i-add dito sa target net income. Okay? So what happens is that yung after tax mong net income naging before tax, pwede mo na siyang i-add sa fixed cost para makuha mo yung uh, hinahanap natin na required number of units or required sales in your CVP analysis. Let's try this problem. The same problem kanina, but nagkaroon na tayo ng desired net income na 270,000. Now, let's just assume that your net income there is before tax. Okay? Before tax na lang natin siya para hindi na tayo magta-transform ng after tax to before tax. Okay? So, this is how you do it. For number one, how many units daw po ang dapat mabenta to achieve 270,000? Okay, so you just have to add your fixed cost to your desired net income. This is your contribution margin that you need to achieve divided by CM per unit. It's 4,000 units. Or you can also do this. Yung target net income mo, work back ka, add back mo si fixed cost. That is your contribution margin na dapat i-achieve to get 270,000 net income. Divide mo sa 90 ang lalabas yung 4,000 units. So for number 2, pwede mo rin gawin formally 90,000 plus 270,000. 360,000, divide mo sa 36%, that is 1 million. Okay? Pwede rin pong yung number of units na target sales mo, multiply mo lang sa selling price, pwede rin po yun, 1 million. Or yung kanina nating technique, ganun din po uli, work back, work back lang, 270 plus 90, 360, divided by 36%, 1 million. O, ganun lang, okay? Mas madaling laruin ang CVP analysis kung nag-work back, work back ka na lang dito sa contribution margin income statement. Okay, ano naman po yung tinatawag nating margin of safety? Okay, ano yung level na safe ka pa, na hindi ka pa malalaglag sa break-even point? Okay, margin of safety measures the potential effect of the risk that sales will fall short of planned sales, which is the difference between the actual or budgeted sales or break-even sales. So, ang gusto natin, yung margin of safety natin, malaki, malayo, mataas. 
No? Okay, so the margin of safety is equals to actual or budgeted sales minus break-even sales. Okay, so to apply the concept, let's try this problem. Jijit Manufacturing Company's budget is revealed. So, meron tayong budgeted net income. Binigyan din kayo ng variable and fixed cost information per unit and the entity's unit selling price. Compute for the margin of safety in peso and in percentage. Okay, so this is how you do it. You start with your selling price per unit of 50, less variable cost per unit of 16.75. San po galing yan? 14 plus 2.5 plus 0.25. So that is your CM per unit. Less fixed cost per unit of 24.5. So tinotal lang din po itong tatlo. And that is your net income per, un per unit. Okay. Now, ito po mga percentage na to, gawin mo na rin agad. Kasi very helpful naman sa CVP analysis lagi. Yung ating mga percentage ng CM, tsaka percentage ng variable cost. Okay. Okay. Now that you get your net income per unit, this is how you do. Di ba ang, budgeted, ang budgeted net income daw natin is 875,000. So pag dinivide mo sa net income per unit na 8.75, lalabas yung number of units na budgeted na mabibenta mo, which is 100,000 units. Then you multiply it by the selling price of 50 pesos per unit, and that is your budgeted sales 5 million. Okay? Then, compute natin si break-even sales. Your fixed cost is 24.5 per unit multiplied by 100,000 units na budgeted mong mabibenta. So, 2,450,000. Divide nyo po sa CM ratio na 66.5%. Your break-even sales is 3,684,253. So, what you do is you get uh, the difference between the budgeted sales and the break-even sales to get your margin of safety. Ang gusto po natin, mas malayo yung margin of safety natin. Okay? And then, i-divide po natin yung margin of safety sa budgeted sales, lalabas po yung margin of safety ratio. The higher the margin of safety ratio, mas maganda for the company. Okay, paano naman po kumuha ng break-even point kung isa ay sorry kung dalawa tatlo apat lima yung iyong uh, product line okay so gagamit po tayo ng tinatawag nating technique na sales mix and yung contribution margin natin is naka weighted average so how do we do it for example ito po <clears throat> calculate the break even point in the following sales mix both in units and peso sales. So binigyan po kayo ng tigitigisang selling price per unit and variable cost per unit. <clears throat> and then, uh, normal operations daw po is 20% lagi yung nabibenta nilang product A, 20% kay product B, and 60% kay product C. Okay? So mas kumikita sila kay product C, dun sila mas maraming binibenta. Okay? And then total fixed cost is 400,000. How do we do it? So your first step is to do this diagram. So the selling price of A, B, and C, and then you deduct the variable cost per unit of A, B, and C, you will get the CM per unit of 60, 70, and 170. Multiply mo siya sa mga sales mix nila, yung CM per unit. So 60 times 20% is 12. 70 times 20% is 14, and 170 times 60% is 102. Then you get the sum of the three, 12 plus 14 plus 102, 128. What do you call your 128? Weighted average contribution margin. Bakit tinawag na weighted average contribution margin? Kasi yung contribution margin mo is nakadepende sa mga weights na binigay natin dun sa sales mix. Okay? So, ganun pa rin po ang sistema. Kung ano yung fixed cost mo, divide mo sa weighted average CM. Okay? Ganun pa rin naman. Fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. Ganun pa rin naman. No? Pero, weighted average yung gagamitin mo. Okay? So, the break-even point in units for the whole company is 3,125. Paano mo malalaman ngayon kung anong components ng 3,125 ang ibebenta mo per product line? Mumultiply mo siya ngayon sa mga sales mix niya. Okay? So, 3,125 units times 20% kay A, 20% kay B, and 60% Kay C. So, ang mauuwi siya sa 625 units kay A, 625 units kay B, and 1,875 units kay C. Okay? And then, you simply multiply those number of units by each respective selling prices to get your break-even point in peso sales. Okay. Thank you very much for these references. You are also wonderful. And thank you for helping me create this uh, slide lessons. Okay? Thank you and have a great day.